refrigerator gets any more fish in it, it'll swim upstream and spawn all by it. On that summer evening, Maurice Chenoweth's tavern was bustling with music and chatter. A mysterious woman entered, catching everyone's attention with her mesmerizing hips. Whispers spread about a shocking event tied to her, igniting curiosity and fear among the patrons. The night took a dark turn as secrets unraveled, leaving everyone astonished by the unfolding drama. Those stinkweeds are another sign of your decadence. In 1959, the movie tells the true story of Lieutenant Coleman A. Peterson's actions one fateful night. A man silently approaches Chenoweth and shoots him six times with a German 9mm Luger. Chenoweth falls to the floor as the murderer calmly walks away. This classic portrays the events surrounding this tragic incident and the impact it had on all involved. They didn't tell her. Yes, Sula? I think we got lunch served uh, for the J. The film, directed by Otto Preminger, explores complex themes of justice, morality, and the human psyche. It is based on true events and crafted from a novel by John D. Volker, who wrote under the pen name Robert Traver. The screenplay by Wendell Mays captures the intricate legal battles surrounding a murder case that challenges the boundaries of right and wrong. Set in a small town, the story revolves around defense attorney Paul Beigler, played by James Stewart, who takes on the case of a soldier accused of killing a man who allegedly raped his wife. The film delves into courtroom drama, showcasing various legal strategies and the psychological intricacies of the characters involved. It features a strong supporting cast including Lee Remick and Ben Gazzara, who contribute to the emotional weight of the narrative. Notable for its realistic portrayal of the legal system, the movie does not shy away from exploring controversial topics such as sexual assault and the defense of temporary insanity. This classic not only entertains, but also invites viewers to consider broader social issues, making it a significant piece in cinematic history. We're laying in the woods, and he stopped the car and turned off the lights, and then he he grabbed me and he said, I'm going to... The film features an impressive cast, including Jimmy Stewart, who takes on the role of the defense attorney, and Lee Remick, who plays the pivotal character of the accused. Ben Gazzara delivers a compelling performance as the husband, while Eve Arden brings her unique charm as the court secretary. The film also showcases the talents of George C. Scott as the formidable prosecutor, and Arthur O'Connell as the co-counsel. Catherine Grant, Brooks West, and Orson Bean add depth to the narrative, with Murray Hamilton rounding out the cast. Filming took place in the picturesque Upper Peninsula of Michigan, capturing the natural beauty of locations like Big Bay and Marquette. These settings not only provided a stunning backdrop for the courtroom drama, but also contributed to the film's overall atmosphere. The choice of such authentic locations helped ground the story in a real community, enhancing the emotional weight of the characters' struggles. This classic combines strong performances with a captivating setting, drawing viewers into its intricate legal battles. Cigarettes around here someplace. You want a cigarette? No, I want to offer you one. You could light it for me. Oh, yes. Some scenes of the 1959 movie were filmed at Thunder Bay Inn in Big Bay, merely a block away from the Lumberjack Tavern, the actual location of the 1952 murder. Moreover, the law library scenes were captured at the Carnegie Public Library in Ishpeming, Michigan. These iconic filming locations added an authentic backdrop to the intricate drama portrayed in the film. It's the ten top tunes, and now the ten most wanted. Go out, don't. The door scene opening into the courthouse in Marquette was actually the door to the men's restroom. Otto Preminger originally wanted Lee Remick for the role of Laura because of her performance in A Face in the Crowd with Andy Griffith. Anatomy of a Murder is a classic legal drama film that captivated audiences with its intricate plot and stellar performances. The attention to detail, like using the restroom door for a courthouse entrance, showcases the dedication of the filmmakers. Lee Remick's portrayal of Laura adds depth to the character, making the film more engaging. The movie's success can be attributed to its cast talent and the director's vision. It's fascinating how these behind-the-scenes details contribute to the overall impact of the film. Watch this classic to experience the magic of filmmaking from the 1950s. It probably won't be. Lana Turner was initially offered the role, but turned it down after Preminger objected to her demand for exclusive designer gowns. The bartender's name at the place where Parnell is drinking is Tobio, and the guard's name at the county jail is Sulio, both Finnish names. 
This classic delves into the intricacies of a murder trial with riveting performances and a captivating plotline that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. The movie skillfully navigates the complexities of the legal system while offering a glimpse into the characters' lives and motivations, creating a compelling narrative that has stood the test of time. Well, uh, yes, I have a little. When you defend him? In the film, a subtle connection emerges through the names that resonate within the narrative. Tobio translates to hope, which adds a layer of optimism amidst the complex legal drama while Sulio, meaning sweet, charming, and adorable, evokes a sense of warmth that contrasts with the grim themes of the story. The character Paul Beegler, portrayed by Jimmy Stewart, exemplifies small-town life, illustrated vividly when he dials zero to reach the operator. This simple act highlights the quaint, close-knit community where everyone knows each other, a setting that frames the unfolding courtroom battle. Intriguingly, Stewart's middle name is Maitland, which coincidentally matches the name of the judge in the original book by John Volker. This alignment enriches the narrative by blending the actor's identity with a fictional world, adding depth to the character of Judge Maitland as he presides over the tense proceedings. The interplay of names and roles weaves a fascinating tapestry within this classic, creating a multi-dimensional experience that resonates on various levels. You do anything. I just want you to understand the letter of the law. In the movie Anatomy of a Murder, when Jimmy Stewart's character visits Catherine Grant, the desk clerk is reading Leon Uris's book Exodus, which Otto Preminger would direct as a film in 1960. Lee Remick's character apologizes to Jimmy Stewart's character for going to a roadhouse, worrying it could hurt her husband's case. This classic showcases complex relationships and legal drama, setting the stage for a suspenseful story filled with twists and turns. The interactions between the characters add depth and intrigue to the narrative, keeping viewers engaged throughout. As the plot unfolds, themes of trust, betrayal, and loyalty come to the forefront, creating a captivating viewing experience for audiences. Anatomy of a Murder presents a compelling exploration of morality and ethics within the context of a gripping courtroom drama, making it a timeless cinematic piece that continues to resonate with viewers to this day. Hello there. I usually ask for the name Paul. Here I am. In the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder, Ben Gazzara, who portrays her husband, would later take on the role of the primary antagonist in Roadhouse's three decades down the line. Gazzara's character is meant to be 28 years old, the same age as Gazzara himself when this classic hit theaters in 1959. The seamless transition between portraying a husband in one film to embodying the main antagonist in another demonstrates Gazzara's versatility as an actor and his ability to convincingly inhabit disparate roles on screen. His performance in Anatomy of a Murder showcases his talent at a young age and sets the stage for his successful career in Hollywood. Hello? Oh yes, it's much better. Huh? Yes, I can hear you fine. In the 1959 film Anatomy of a Murder, George C. Scott's portrayal of Claude Dancer is outstanding, contributing significantly to the movie's acclaim. George C. Scott, who served in the Marine Corps, brought authenticity to his role. Interestingly, most of the principal male cast members also had military backgrounds, further grounding the performances in realism. However, Ben Gazzara was an exception, as he did not have military service experience, standing out among his fellow actors. The combination of Scott's stellar performance and the authenticity brought by the military service backgrounds of the cast members added depth and credibility to the film, enhancing its impact on audiences. Anatomy of a Murder remains a classic in cinematic history, remembered for its compelling characters and performances. If a few questions and answers, it might be of some help in your defense. In October 1959, Anatomy of a Murder had its UK premiere at Columbia Theatre in London, running at its full 161-minute length. However, Columbia's UK division later requested director Preminger to trim 20 minutes from the film, assuring him it would only be displayed in small-town markets. To Preminger's dismay, they screened the shortened version in London, causing his displeasure with the decision. He said that there wasn't any need for me to walk, that he could drive me into the park on another road. Nah, I didn't know there was another... In 1959, the movie faced controversy when it was sold to TV. Preminger took legal action against Columbia Pictures and Screen Gems for altering the film and inserting commercials, but he did not win the case. 
the film stirred audiences and censors with its use of provocative language, featuring words like contraceptive, panties, penetration, and sperm. These terms shocked viewers and caused a stir in the entertainment industry. Is that okay? You know, I, I think maybe you better cancel all my appointments for today. What appointment? Public reaction and conclusion when Anatomy of a Murder was released. Jimmy Stewart's father famously criticized it, calling it a dirty picture and even took out a newspaper ad advising people not to see it. Despite this initial backlash, the movie has since garnered a reputation as one of the best films ever made. Viewers are encouraged to watch it, not only for its historical significance, but also for its groundbreaking cinematic qualities. Its complex storytelling and intricate characters have solidified its place in movie history as a must-see classic. Wrong with the first marriage? Well, what went wrong is when I went for Manny. Well, that's awesome, huh? Anatomy of a Murder made a big impact when it was first released in 1959. People loved it. The movie was praised for its courtroom drama and how it tackles serious topics. It was a hit with audiences and critics. This classic even influenced other movies and shows that came after it. Many people watched it, and it became a part of popular culture. After its success, Anatomy of a Murder inspired spin-offs and adaptations. People wanted more of the story and its characters. Merchandise like posters and DVDs were made for fans to enjoy. The legacy of this film lives on through these spin-offs and the continued popularity of the original movie. Anatomy of a Murder isn't just a movie, it's a part of history that left a lasting mark on entertainment. Even today, its impact can still be seen in how movies and shows are made. Are you ready to tell me the story? I know what you mean. The casting process for the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder involved rigorous auditions and chemistry tests to select the perfect actors for each key role. James Stewart was chosen for the lead role of defense attorney Paul Beigler due to his reputation as a versatile actor. Lee Remick's audition showcased her ability to portray the complex character of Laura Mannion convincingly. Ben Gazzara impressed during chemistry tests with his dynamic portrayal of Lieutenant Frederick Mannion. Arthur O'Connell's audition displayed his natural charm, earning him the role of Parnell McCarthy. Eve Arden's wit and charisma stood out during casting, securing her the role of Maida Rutledge. Each actor's unique qualities and performances during auditions defined their casting in this iconic film. Lieutenant, what's your legal excuse for killing Barney Quill? By emphasizing realism and psychological depth, Otto Preminger crafted a compelling narrative in Anatomy of a Murder. His directorial vision centered on creating an authentic courtroom drama that delved into the complexities of human emotions and legal ethics. Influenced by the gritty realism of literary sources, Preminger sought to present the story without moral commentary, allowing the audience to draw their own conclusions. He employed a naturalistic style that broke from traditional standards of film at the time, opting for longer takes and less intrusive editing. Collaboration with the cast was key. He empowered actors like James Stewart and Lee Remick to develop their characters fully, fostering an environment of honesty and openness. Preminger also worked closely with a cinematographer, capturing the courtroom's tense atmosphere through thoughtful framing and lighting. The use of jazz music scored by Duke Ellington further heightened the film's emotional impact, enhancing the narrative's underlying tension. This approach created a rich tapestry of human experience, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. It's been crazy. The production of the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder was a fascinating endeavor. The set design was meticulously crafted to recreate a courtroom, adding to the authenticity of the film. Filming took place on location in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, providing a stunning backdrop for the story. Logistical challenges such as weather conditions and remote filming locations were overcome to bring the movie to life. Innovative techniques were employed during production, including the use of new camera angles and lighting to enhance the storytelling. Additionally, the filmmakers incorporated a jazz score into the movie, a bold choice at the time that added a unique and memorable element to the film. Overall, the production of Anatomy of a Murder was a blend of creative vision, technical expertise, and logistical finesse that resulted in a cinematic masterpiece that continues to captivate audiences to this day. To the law. Could be that you owe the lieutenant a chance to find a defense. 
could also the musical score and soundtrack of the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder were crafted to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the film. Composers Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn brought their jazz expertise to create a dynamic and atmospheric soundtrack that perfectly complemented the on-screen drama. The music's improvisational nature added tension and suspense to crucial scenes, heightening the audience's engagement. Musicians like saxophonist Johnny Hodges and drummer Louis Belson contributed their talents to enrich the soundtrack further, imbuing it with a sense of authenticity and depth. Through their collaboration, Ellington, Strayhorn, and the other musicians succeeded in crafting a captivating musical backdrop that seamlessly intertwined with the movie's storyline, enhancing its impact and emotional resonance. This is Barney Anatomy of a Murder's most iconic scene showcased the film's masterful direction, powerful performances, and innovative cinematography. The courtroom sequence where James Stewart's character, Paul Beagler, cross-examines the prosecution's witness is a standout. Director Otto Preminger's use of long, uninterrupted takes heightens the tension, while Stewart's nuanced delivery captivates the audience. Another memorable moment is the scene where Beagler interviews the defendant, played by Ben Gazzara. Preminger's camera work, with its fluid movements and intimate framing, draws the viewer into the character's emotional exchange. The film's climactic closing arguments also leave a lasting impression, with Stewart's impassioned plea resonating deeply. According to Preminger, these scenes were carefully crafted to challenge the audience's preconceptions and engage them in the moral complexities of the case. The actors, too, have praised the director's ability to elicit naturalistic performances that elevate the material. Ultimately, Anatomy of a Murder's iconic moments have cemented its place as a landmark in American cinema, influencing generations of filmmakers and captivating audiences with its masterful storytelling. So have there been any children by or from any of these marriages? No. Any? Firstly, let's delve into the cultural impact of the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder. Anatomy of a Murder tackled complex themes such as justice, morality, and the legal system striking a chord with audiences of the time. The film's realistic portrayal of a court case and the exploration of human behavior in the face of crime captivated viewers and prompted reflection on the intricacies of right and wrong. Transition moving on to the social impact of the film. Anatomy of a Murder sparked discussions on issues like law, ethics, and the nature of truth. By portraying the legal process in a detailed and thought-provoking manner, the movie encouraged viewers to contemplate the nuances of the justice system and the moral dilemmas faced by individuals involved in legal proceedings. Transition. Let's now explore how the film influenced pop culture. The movie's success and critical acclaim propelled it into the popular consciousness, with its innovative approach to storytelling and character development leaving a lasting impression on the film industry. Anatomy of a Murder set a standard for courtroom dramas and inspired future filmmakers to explore similar themes with depth and complexity. Transition in conclusion, Anatomy of a Murder's cultural and social impact was significant, resonating with audiences, influencing pop culture, and fostering discussions on relevant themes that continue to be relevant today. We were late in the woods. He stopped the car and turned off the lights. And then he, he grabbed me and he said... Upon its release, Anatomy of a Murder received significant critical acclaim. Reviewers praised its realistic portrayal of a courtroom drama, highlighting the film's intelligent script and strong performances, particularly by James Stewart as the defense attorney. Critics noted how the film handled complex themes of morality and justice, setting it apart from typical crime dramas of the time. Audience reactions were also positive, appreciating the film's engaging storytelling and the moral dilemmas it presented. The film garnered multiple nominations, including a prestigious Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. It also received nominations for Best Actor and Best Screenplay, demonstrating the recognition of its writing and performances. These accolades reinforced the reputations of those involved, particularly director Otto Preminger, whose bold choices and direction were acknowledged by critics. The film's impact extended beyond its initial release, influencing future courtroom dramas and establishing a benchmark for realistic depictions of legal proceedings. Its legacy remains a testament to the artistry of its creators. Wait, uh, hello? Mr. Well, yeah, this is Paul Beagler speaking. During the filming of Anatomy of a Murder in 1959, 
an amusing incident took place involving James Stewart, who played the lead role. In a scene where Stewart's character was supposed to angrily throw a glass against the wall, the prop glass was unexpectedly replaced with a real glass. Stewart, caught off guard, threw the glass as intended, only to have it shatter upon impact. His genuine surprise and quick recovery added a raw authenticity to the scene that director Otto Preminger decided to keep in the final cut. Another behind-the-scenes moment involved the film's composer, Duke Ellington, who made a cameo appearance in a jazz club scene. Ellington, known for his musical genius, also contributed to the film's soundtrack. During breaks in filming, he would entertain the cast and crew with impromptu piano performances, creating a lively and inspiring atmosphere on set. The chemistry between the cast members, including Stuart, Lee Remick, and Ben Gazzara, was palpable both on and off the screen. They developed a close bond during filming, often sharing meals and engaging in friendly banter between takes. This camaraderie translated into the on-screen dynamics, enhancing the overall performances in the movie. As filming progressed, the cast and crew faced challenges typical of any production, but their dedication and passion for the project shone through. From long shooting days to technical hiccups, everyone involved in Anatomy of a Murder worked together seamlessly to bring the gripping courtroom drama to life. Tell me everything you told the state police, plus everything you didn't tell the state police. Influencing the landscape of cinema, Anatomy of a Murder introduced a more realistic portrayal of courtroom drama. The film broke conventional boundaries by openly discussing sensitive topics like sexual assault and mental health, which were often avoided in earlier films. This frankness paved the way for future filmmakers to explore complex moral dilemmas, pushing narratives into deeper psychological territories. The use of a non-linear storytelling style and an emphasis on character development set a new standard for courtroom dramas. Its focus on the gray areas of law and morality has inspired countless films and television shows, creating a genre that thrives on ambiguity rather than clear-cut justice. Directors and writers have often pointed to Anatomy of a Murder as a key influence, noting its impact on the depiction of legal systems in popular culture. Films like A Few Good Men and TV shows like Law & Order owe aspects of their storytelling to the groundwork laid by this 1959 classic. Its legacy continues to resonate, shaping how stories about crime and justice are told even today. Dear viewers, we invite you to share your experiences and memories of the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder. How did this film impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Your stories are valuable and can spark engaging discussions. Like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. In quite a while. She's been through all your albums from Dixieland to Brubeck. What do you think?